Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, today we're actually going to continue with a little bit more investigation into the problem that I affectionately call my curtain effect. Now really this looks like an imprint of my timing belt and I do believe that that is the root cause of this problem. We discussed it in the previous session and as a result of that I had quite a few people come back to me and uh, if you like, offer me solutions to the problem. Um, apart from changing the machine, which is an obvious solution, I'm not planning to go that far at this moment in time. But after I'd finished publishing my video, I did sit down and think about it quite a lot more and decided that although I've been using timing belts for many years in designs, I've never encountered this problem before because I've never had machinery that's been this sensitive. And so I decided I'd start having a little bit more of a look to see if I could really understand what was going on. Obviously my initial poking around on the machine was not going to solve the problem. So my research started going back to basics and looking at, you know, as it says here, the world of timing belts. And some of the interesting things that I came across to start with, I've, I've highlighted in yellow here. First of all, uh, the ideal situation for a timing belt is to have it under low tension, not under high tension. Um, it claims here that the speed is transmitted uniformly because there is no caudal rise and fall in the pitch line, as in the case of roller chains. Now that's something I'm going to take issue with very shortly. Um, but let's just have a quick look at seeing what I've always been used to using these trapezoidal tooth belt profiles. On the machine that I've been using, I absolutely know that the drive belt was this curvilinear tooth profile. Um, it had definitely got round teeth on it. And when you look at the close up of my timing pulley, as you could in the previous video, yeah, you can clearly see the round teeth. Now, this picture purports to show the advantages of a curvilinear tooth and that is the fact that it produces a much even, much better stress pattern. It's capable of transmitting higher torques, in other words, whereas this um, trapezoidal one has got stresses that build up on the corner. Now, in both instances, what we see here is this tension member as drawn in this picture as being a curve. Now, that's the sort of thing that I'm afraid I've got to take issue with because when you start wrapping something around a small profile and you certainly put it under stress you will produce a series of cords between the teeth in the stress member. Now the more stress you put into the system the straighter that line will be as it tries to jump between the teeth. Now it's difficult to analyse what's going on with these small cords and one of the tricks that I learnt very early on in my engineering career was if you want to understand something make it simple, exaggerate it, and then you can interpolate back to the more complex situation. So what are we looking at here? Well, on the left hand side, I have something which is a gross exaggeration. It's a four toothed pulley. In other words, it's a square with four teeth on it and a belt that passes round the pulley and on the other end I've got a round idler pulley. This is only for the purpose of analysis. I know you can't get four toothed pulleys because they just don't work but the principle will apply as you expand the number of teeth upwards. It's not a major jump from four teeth to sixteen teeth which is the number of teeth that are on my pulley. First of all as I rotate the pulley you can see that the center line of the belt is moving out of horizontal. Both the top half of the belt and the bottom half of the belt. In the middle of the belt here I've got a point which I call the datum point. Now that's where the head is actually fixed to the belt itself and it's constrained to move in a horizontal plane. So because this, ba because this basic corner here is assumed to be a tooth, as I rotate this pulley by 90 degrees what will happen is this corner remain engaged in this pulley. So effectively this member here which starts off life as being 237.5 millimeters long remains at 237.5 millimeters long and all that happens is I as I rotate this 
it will move further and further along this horizontal plane. And of course, as it moves further along this horizontal plane, what it will do, it will force the belt round this pulley. And as it forces the belt round this idler pulley, what will happen is this end starts going up in the air. And as this end goes up in the air, the cord length around here, the contact length, starts shortening. So whereas it starts off at 180 degrees of engagement, i.e. we have 78.54 millimetres of engagement, as the cord starts going up, the belt that's engaged starts reducing. But of course, this contact length here starts increasing. But the thing that's remaining constant is this contact line around these two sides. In other words, this is 50 millimetres and this is 50 millimetres. So we take this in 10 degree intervals through 90 degrees and we finish back up pitched round one tooth. And during the course of that 90 degree rotation, I've plotted and now measured the change of head position and at the end we've travelled one pitch 50 millimetres. Now here we can see the results of that analysis. Basically what we've got here is the red line shows that during 90 degrees i.e. one pitch the motion is totally non-linear so 10 degrees of motion here produces 5, 5.5 all the way up to 6 and then back the way back down again. I'm not saying that my pulley acts exactly like this. This is a gross exaggeration to demonstrate the principle that's going on here. If you had a car with square wheels it would make very very uncomfortable driving. If you change the tyres and you put eight sided tyres on it would still be very uncomfortable driving. So I've gone one step further than that with my pulley. I've got 16 flats on my tyre. I think you can see that it would still not make very smooth driving. You need quite a lot of flats so that you start approximating to a pure circle and you don't feel any vibration. So I hope that you can see from this example that because I've got a small number of teeth on my drive pulley, I have got basically a problem that I can't really get rid of. Now the suggestion made by a couple of people was that I really ought to have a toothed pulley on the other end and that a smooth pulley was the worst thing I could possibly have. Well, I think the logic taking this to its conclusion is that if I was to put one of these pulleys on the other end, if it accidentally was out of synchronization with the first pulley, I might get better results. But if it was in synchronization with the first pulley, I would get twice the error. Now the other issue that we were looking at was change of belt length. Bear in mind this is a four toothed pulley. This is one revolution and this is the way the belt is changing its length during one revolution. Now it's not a huge amount of change but the point is the belt is actually stretching during the revolution because of the change of the geometry. Again the same thing will apply just because I've got 16 teeth as opposed to four teeth it's going to make it substantially less but there's still going to be this pattern there and the only way to really mitigate this problem and try and resolve it is to make it into something that really is insignificant that is increasing the number of teeth to possibly 32 or 40 and I just haven't got the room on my machine to do anything like that but of course as soon as I start increasing the number of teeth I'm starting to decrease the resolution of the stepper motor. Um, now whether or not I can restore that by settings on the stepper motor is another question. Does it give me a problem? Well I saw it as something that wasn't perfect but hey I bought a Chinese machine it's never going to be perfect. I'm sure that when the Chinese designer um, sat down and worked on this machine the reason for choosing a 16 tooth pulley directly out of the stepper motor was purely motivated by cost. The fact that there may well have been collateral damage caused by that decision was of little interest to them. The machine has good resolution, it's got good speed, overall it's performing extremely well for the cost. So now understanding that there is a problem that I can do nothing about, then 
I really only have two choices. I either rework the machine in a major way or I live with it and for the purpose that I've got the machine I can live with it. I also suspect that when the um, when the designer of this machine sat down and chose this belt he got as far as here and saw the strong fibre class tensile cords wrapped in a durable neoprene body provide the flexibility needed for increased service life. Sounds like a good idea to use fibre class cords. We find that they've got a very high uh, load capability, in other words they're capable of transmitting very high horsepower. It clearly says here high strength, low, in low elongation or stretch and excellent dimensional stability. So. It would appear that these are just the job for our application where we want good positional control. So when we start looking here at the properties of fiberglass for a belt tensioning member, the first thing we see is operate over small pulley. Well I think you'll find that my 16mm is definitely a small pulley. Poor. High pulley speed. Poor. Vibration absorption, poor. And elasticity required in the belt, poor. So perhaps this is not the best material to be using for a belt. Now like everything else that I do, I've laid out very carefully in front of you the reasons why I've come to the conclusions that I've come to. Now there may be some flaw in my logic, but I'm very happy to leave the machine as it is and I hope that this might preempt quite a few questions that others may have wanted to ask. I'm afraid it's just part of my nature that if I see something that doesn't look quite right I don't I really do want to try and understand why and how that situation exists. Whether or not I can do anything about it is a separate issue but my natural curiosity leads me into many dark alleys as you have probably discovered. Well thank you very much for listening to my ramblings. Um, the only conclusion I can really draw from all of this work is that um, the bottom picture on the left there was what happened when I reduced the tension away from very high back to medium. I think the picture on the right shows you what happens when you increase the tension. You definitely get more flats whereas if you reduce the tension the natural flex and curvature in the belt tends to take over and you get slightly better curvature on the stress members. Well thanks again for listening and uh, we'll see you next time.